Salam alaikum, brother Bokar. Salam alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Nice to you. Alhamdulillah. It's almost asking you in Turkish, Nasalsiniz. Ben iyi. What does that mean? <laughs> that means, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> That's great. Anyways, um, so it's been now uh, how many years since you become a son? Uh, it's December 2009. So it's almost uh, four and a half years. Mashallah. Mm -hmm. So. Can you tell, I guess, uh, share with us your journey before what led you to Islam? I mean, there was a little journey because I was always looking for something that was missing in the life, right? And, uh, and I have to admit, I went all the way to the other direction. Um, I, I'm a physicist, right? And as a physicist, you train your brain and your thought that you don't need God in life. You don't need this, right? And because everything is working towards or again, or like a law, right? And you find out, and humans are capable to find out all the laws. And so that pushed more and more, like, you know, in Europe, that happens, of course, since 200 years, that God was basically pushed out because of science and because of technology outside of the life. However, you know, for me, something was missing. And I, you know, like many other Muslims who converted, I also studied Buddhism and other things. I looked into that and I got attracted to Buddhism because there was this um, thought about, you know, meditation. I kind of like that. So to, to you know, take yourself out of, of the regular world, right? And um, so I listened to a lot of Buddhist practices and, uh, you know, things were like suffering, right? And all the things that we say now is in the dunya, right? They are all being taken, taken away, right? Sorry. So, okay, so, uh, so what happened, I guess, after... So, I mean, what I'm saying is I started to meditate and started to, um, you know, think about, you know, what are these essential things. And like Buddhists, right, they try to detach them from what we call the dunya. I'm right. making a long story short. Later, um, I got a job, or I got not a job, but an assignment in the United Emirates. That was the first time I was ever in a Muslim country. And that was a new thing to me. So I was open to that, but I tell you quite frankly, if you would have asked me to become a Muslim that time, I would say, you're crazy. Right? I would never ever do that, you know, because I was, of course, like like everybody else, um, I heard the biased news from 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 the news, right? And what Muslims are, and I had not a right perception from what Muslims are. And that's not quite right. I was actually in Turkey before, and I, I heard the azan in the morning, and I thought it was just crazy. Right? So that was they were backwards. That was my honest belief. Now, I was in the Emirates, and um, the first thing that came where I got a little bit more. You know, closer to what what Islam was. I had this driver who was driving me every morning to the um, to the office and back. So the, the office there sent a, a driver and they picked me up from the hotel and drove me back. I was there for the first week and I thought, since I'm in Abu Dhabi, I don't want to see Dubai and we'll see how that looks like. And I asked the guy if he would be free on the weekend and would drive me around in Dubai. So yes, he came. We drove around and um, now he was Muslim. And he asked me if he could make some stops on the road. He said he had to do some prayers. I was not aware of that concept when the prayers were and whatnot. I said, of course, you have to do what you have to do. So he kept driving me around. He dropped me off back at the hotel. And then he said to me, after I paid him, I paid him a little tip more than I should have, or I was supposed to. And um, he said, I pray for you. And the way he said that, it was not just, I pray for you, and he said that that was deep from his heart. That really touched me. So that was the first thing. And later on, I also met my wife that I have now, right, and she introduced, started to introduce me more. So the second incident is, I was having a taxi driver, another taxi driver drove me to the big mosque in Abu Dhabi, and he introduced me to voodoo, how to make voodoo and everything. And I went to the prayer, that was the first time at the big mosque in I think it was a Friday prayer, I can't even remember. It was the first because it was packed there and uh, we did the Friday prayer. I didn't know what I'm, I was just imitating pretty much. So that was the first first steps towards Islam. And then the other thing I observed there, that was at 12 o'clock when the Adam was praying, everybody would go to the mosque. 
And I liked that concept a lot because that was very close what I learned from the Buddhists. Right? They really practiced it. Everybody did. They dropped everything and went arm in arm together down the elevator into the mosque. They said, wow, well, look at that. Right? So that was, that's amazing. Right? They really stop and stop all the nonsense that you do in life. I mean, I shouldn't say nonsense, but you know, all your busy work and you go and go pray and distance yourself from the dunya. Right? Yeah. And then come back and they come arm in arm, you know, like friends. That was impressive to me. Right? So these are these are things. And then of course I, I, I shouldn't neglect the neglect the part that I met my wife and she kept teaching me and teach taught me how to pray and taught me everything about Islam and so I picked up, you know, eventually I converted, right? So I took the Shahada in Abu Dhabi. جثم المسافر ما غفى مثفض حبا ووفى والى المدينه هزنا شوق لقرب المصطفى قلوبنا دروبنا موعد للقاء من هنا أشرقا والدرب زان مع القرآن ارتقى شانونا في المعالي ارتقى نبراسنا في العلا عنوان شع السنة من حولنا من الدنا عنا فرض يا إلهنا يا الله وهنا شع السنة من حولنا من الدنا عنا فرض يا إلهنا. بيك نعم أسيا ماكم سعيدا. سأي جامات بونو أرين. دعنا بديرينا يا أباني سمت دوا ساتو دوا ini. سأي مرسى بانغا يا. Bahwa ada satu semat peningkatan dari kaum muslimin dan kaum muslimat di wilayah perumahan Pondok Kacang Prima ini. Mudah-mudahan ke depan ya perumahan Pondok Kacang Prima ini semuanya nih ya pada berbelanja di apa namanya di semat dua satu dua ini. Karena apa? Kita mengingat dua satu dua itu adalah tonggak sejarah buat umat Islam ya. Umat Islam karena dua satu dua bertanda umat Islam itu bersatu ya. Untuk itu. Uh, saya berharap agar komplek Pondok Kacang Prima ini merupakan satu persatuan yang lebih kokoh lagi, lebih kuat lagi hukum Islamnya kita. Harapan saya semoga ya apa nama ini uh, uh, Semak 212 ini ke depan lebih maju, bukan yang segini aja Pak, di, ditingkatkan terus dan dan rasa silaturahmi kita kepada kaum muslimin di lingkungan Pondok, Pondok Kacang Prima ini tolong ditingkatkan baik ibu-ibunya maupun bapak-bapaknya ya. Artinya apa? Karena Islam itu harus begitu menyampaikan informasi ya berita-berita atau apa namanya berita-berita penting dari kaum muslimin itu kita sampaikan kepada kepada apa namanya masyarakat kita terlebih terlebih lebih Pak RT apa RT dan Pak RW itu Ibu RT Ibu RW ini harus semangat gitu ini barangkali yang bisa saya sampaikan ya atas nama apa namanya camat Mono Aren merasa bangga dan mendukung acara ini Pak ya mendukung banget acara ini karena ini adalah silaturahmi rahim dari uh, kaum muslimin dan muslimat di lingkungan Pondok Kacang Prima terima kasih ya alhamdulillah uh, minggu ini koperasi 212 koperasi syariah 212 itu membuka gerai yang ke-127 di Pondok Kacang Prima. Dan minggu ini kita ada 8 gerai yang dibuka. Alhamdulillah ini pertumbuhannya luar biasa. Dan giroh dari umat itu luar biasa. Mudah-mudahan ini kita bisa menjaga istiqo, istiqo, keistiqomahan kita dalam 
memperjuangkan, menguatkan ekonomi umat dan saya mengucapkan selamat buat uh, komunitas KS212 Tangerang Selatan juga yang bekerja sama dengan koperasi uh, umat Madani Bersatu. Mudah-mudahan uh, ini menjadi jalan kita untuk menegakkan uh, Islam dalam bidang ekonomi dan mensejahterakan umat Islam secara keseluruhan. Alhamdulillah.